Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Mr. Richardson of Visual Arts for my grade fours this time. So you're going to be starting to learn about printmaking. You're going to be creating a print of your own name or a nickname or someone else's name based on stamping using some cardboard and paint. Or if you don't have paint, then you'll need two different colored textures. And of course, a paintbrush, a piece of printer paper, a pair of scissors, a gray lead pencil, and a piece of paper towel. And let's get started. Okay, everyone, so there's two different versions that you can do with this activity, depending on what materials you've got at home. So if you don't have acrylic paint or any brushes, then your version will be with two different colored textures. Otherwise, if you have both textures and acrylic paint at home, then you'll just need one lighter colored uh, texture and a darker colored acrylic paint blob. Okay, so you choose the option that works for you. So to start off with, you'll need some cardboard, some thin cardboards, like from a a, a biscuit box, a cereal box. So it's got a plain side and then a shiny printed side. So you need to make sure that the cardboard that you're using has got that. Start off with your piece of cardboard with the shiny side down. And it's really important that you have the shiny side down to do this so that your print is going to go onto the paper correctly. Now, all you're going to do is just write your name or your initials, probably easier if you just do your initials. So the first letter of your first name and the first letter of your last name. For me, I am going to do Mr. R. So it's up to you what sort of writing you want to do. And there's lots of really cool websites there on the internet that you can have a look at for some cool lettering to get some ideas of how you'd like your writing to look like. Anyway, so there is my writing that I want to do. So then I'm going to get my pair of scissors and cut it out. Notice that I have joined them up. That's gonna make things easier for when we are stamping. Because if you do them separate, then it's gonna make it difficult to stamp them. You're gonna to have to do them separately. So if you can try and overlap and join them together, so all into one, that's going to be a lot easier for you for when you stamp. Okay, now to get those little bits inside the letters, you need to kind of bend it and fold it, and then you cut along the line, and that gives you a gap to put your scissors into, and then you can cut the rest out as normal. Yeah. 
Now, I want to fix up that wobbly bit where I cut it. So I'm going to get some sticky tape, some masking tape, and just fix it up. I don't need too much, but make sure you stick it on the top side, the plain side. Don't want to do it on the other side, otherwise it's going to wreck your print. Okay, there we go, all done, fixed. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your piece of paper and your water bottle and you're going to give it a little bit of a spray just to wet it and then sit it aside. Now, of course, if you don't have an empty spray bottle with water, you can always use a kitchen sponge with some, a little bit of water in it, but make sure it's not too soggy, but a kitchen sponge with, sponge with a bit of water in it and just pat it on top of the paper just to make sure it's wet. And that should do the trick just fine. Now, the next stage is I'm just gonna put a bit of cardboard down so I don't wanna get too much mess on my table. I'm going to get my lighter colored texture. And I'm going to color it thoroughly on the shiny side. Make sure it's the shiny side and make sure that you have a texture that works really, really well. Because if it's dry and it's not juicy and you can't see all the texture on the top, then your print's not gonna be very clear. Not that this one matters too much because you're gonna see what it does with the water on the paper very shortly. But, no one likes dry textures. They're all scratchy and yuck and not very colorful at all. So, go through all of your textures at home and find the best one that's gonna have lots of good texture color to push on your cardboard. go and check to see that you've got all of the gaps. Make sure that you haven't touched bits and rubbed it off. So if you have, just add a little bit more. I can see that it's already kind of dried out a little bit, but hopefully, fingers crossed, that the wet paper will work fine. Okay, so I'm gonna get my slightly soggy wet paper. And I'm gonna carefully pick up my stencil that I have cut out and colored in. And I'm gonna place it with the shiny side, colored side down and place it in the middle on the wet part. And I'm going to hold it still. See my fingers are spaced apart. I'm just going to tap, 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 tap. Over all of that cardboard stencil. You can see that some of the color is already starting to come out. And I can see also, there is a bit that I've missed. So I'm gonna give it a quick spritz and put it back down. And what should happen is if you've pressed over all of the cardboard piece and you lift it up very, very carefully, not to tear the cardboard, you should have done a print of your lettering, which is really cool. And you can see that some of the bits are already bleeding. So this part here where there's lots more water, it, what bleeding is, it, it pushes out and follows the water through the paper. Now, some of it's looking pretty crisp at the moment, and I'm going to do something absolutely, well, you may think it's absolutely terrible, but, spray it again and you can see it's going to bleed a lot more and you can have a bit of a play around and t 
tip the paper and it's going to run. That's okay. Not too much, just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry because I need to do the next stage. Now, if you have only got textures, then just do this next stage with the texture. But what you need to do first is get your paper towel and just blot it to get rid of some of the extra color off it. Don't try and rub too much because it will tear, just press and blot. Okay, and then you should be ready to do the next step. So either repeat the process with the darker texture, the different color texture, or if you've got acrylic paint, then you can paint the shiny side of your stencil with acrylic paint. Okay, so essentially doing the same thing. Put, if you're using paint, put plenty of paint on. Okay, it should look shiny on the cardboard and it should cover up any of the colored part of the cardboard that you can see. Don't be too stingy with the paint because if it looks sort of see-through and you can see any of the writing through the paint, then I can't guarantee that it's going to give you a good print and it may dry out. It all depends on what your environment's like at home. If the heat is on, perhaps it may dry out pretty quick or if there's a breeze, it may dry out pretty quick. So you can always go back, but it should look shiny. Just make sure you smooth out any blobs that you've covered up every single bit of that cardboard. Okay, and you can see, you can check in the light, it's shiny. Okay, and then the next stage is you need to make sure that your first piece, your first print that you've done is dry. So you might need to put it outside in the sunshine to dry, so make sure it doesn't blow away, or you can cheat and if you've got a hairdryer, you can borrow mum's hairdryer and dry it. So that will get the job done a lot quicker, but it must be dry before you do the next print. So I'll see you soon with my dry piece of paper. All right, so I have painted my stencil and I have a dry piece of paper that I have done for my first step. So you don't want to muck around too much with the next step, but you're gonna to have to very carefully pick up either the stencil with the text on it, or if you've done paint, then the paint version. Now, mine's kind of hard to see from the first bit. I can see that part of the R there, and I'm gonna to want to try and match it up. So I'm going to put it on top, right here, and lay it on the top. And same deal with the first step. Tap, 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 don't rub. Just press all over. So one finger has to hold it still and keep tapping and moving it around, but don't let the cardboard move. Don't let it smear around and smudge across the page. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a clear print. Uh -huh. And there is your double print of your name or your initials, Mr. R with the cool pink bleeding all out the sides. So have a bit of a, tr a play around with the different colors, play around with um, using the texture for both your prints. Um, do the, the texture and the paint option too, if you want to give that a go, try it with different lettering. But I think that's really cool. And it definitely matches the big R on my t-shirt. So, have fun with that, and I'll see you next time. Bye.